Welcome to another video in this special video series. I'm doing all about how to wholesale and flip houses as a result of the new real estate market caused by the coronavirus crisis. Now, as of now, over 26 million people have lost their jobs and another 15 million are expected in coming weeks. That means as a real estate investor, especially a wholesaler and a flipper, you need to know what to say to sellers and be prepared and equipped for what I call the COVID convo. And with the new mortgage forbearance available to financially distressed homeowners, it's even more important you know how to talk to distressed sellers about coronavirus. So on today's video, I'm gonna share with you my four-step process for talking to sellers and even share with you my new word-for-word -word COVID scripts. All of that and more coming up. This video is brought to you by 10K Club, a program that pays you $10,000 for finding ugly houses. Learn more at my10kcheck.com. Hey, if you're new here to this channel, I'm Jerry Norton with FlippingMastery.com, and this channel is all about ways to help you make money wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss new videos. This is now the 16th video I've released in this special video series about how to wholesale and flip real estate during and post coronavirus. The game is changing and it's changing quickly and my goal is to help you navigate through these unprecedented times so that you can come out victorious and make even more money. I've created a coronavirus playlist where you can find all of these videos and I'll put the link to that playlist in the description below for you. If you're out there right now in the market having quality conversations, you know that coronavirus is a big concern for many distressed sellers who have recently lost their jobs or are fearful of losing their jobs. Now, as of this recording, there have been 26 million jobs lost and that's just in the past five weeks. To really put this number in perspective, during the 2008 recession, there were 8.7 million job losses. As of now, we're losing that many every 10 days or so. Now take a look at this chart showing the weekly unemployment claims. During the last recession, the peak unemployment claim was the week of March 29th, 2009 with 665,000 claims. Then we experienced 10 years of remarkable job growth, reaching a 50 year low in unemployment, just prior to COVID-19. But when coronavirus hit and stay-at-home orders were issued and businesses were forced to close, it took an immediate massive toll on employment. Just look at these stats. The week of March 21st, 3.3 million unemployment claims. The following week of March 28th, hit a record high of 6.8 million claims. And then fortunately, it started trending down but still astronomical. April 4th was 6.6 .6 million, April 11th was 5.2 million, and April 18th was 4.4 million. Now the hope is that once quarantines are lifted, we'll see a V-shaped recovery and people will go back to work and the economy will bounce back, but the reality is some businesses aren't gonna be able to recover and many jobs are permanently gone. The fact is a lot of people are out of work and those ill-prepared financially are quickly running into a big problem with paying their mortgage payments. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my exact four-step process to help homeowners who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19, including my word-for-word -word scripts, as well as a COVID mortgage forbearance cheat sheet. Now, if you aren't intimately aware of the new mortgage forbearance and how it affects your ability to get deals from distressed sellers, you will after this video. I've got a lot to go over with you on this video, but these are must have resources for today. And don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to get them for free. So keep watching. Now to really understand the situation when someone loses their job and they're faced with being unable to pay their loan, we need to take a closer look at the foreclosure process. Now when someone stops making their mortgage payment to the bank, a sequence of events is triggered. First, the bank gives a grace period of usually 120 days where they will call and they'll send threatening letters for the borrower to catch up their missed payments. I call this small window pre-pre-foreclosure. Next, the bank has to file what's called a notice of default, which informs the borrower that the bank is moving forward with foreclosure. Now, this is officially the pre-foreclosure stage. If the borrower still doesn't get caught up, the bank will hold a foreclosure auction to sell the property. 
Opening bid is usually the amount owed to the bank, and if no one buys the property at the auction, the bank takes back the property, and it now becomes a bank-owned property, or what's called an REO, and then it's sold on the open market for fair market value. For a more detailed breakdown, check out a video I did where I really explain the process and all of the steps. I'll put a link to that video in the description below, and you can watch it later. Now, traditionally, pre-foreclosure leads are a tried and true lead source, but with the new COVID mortgage forbearance, a new type of pre-foreclosure lead is emerging and will continue to emerge in coming months and years because of the COVID fallout. And it's important for you to understand all of your seller's options and have multiple solutions for him, including the new COVID mortgage forbearance option. I believe you have to become somewhat of an expert on the COVID mortgage forbearance right now so that you can properly discuss this option with distressed sellers. Using a cheat sheet that I put together, later in this video, I'll be reviewing exactly what you need to know. But this is not just helpful for you to understand how forbearance works, but you can provide this to distressed sellers who are considering this option. Now, if you'd like this for free, just leave a comment and say, thank you, Jerry, you are a flipping genius. I want that forbearance cheat sheet and I'll give you the download link. Now we're gonna come back to how and when to discuss forbearance with your sellers in a minute, but first let's review my four step process to help homeowners that are financially distressed and unable to pay their loan because of COVID. Let's review these steps using a simple mind map as well as review my word for word scripts. And like I said, I'll give you this for free, but please keep in mind to be most effective, you need to adapt these scripts to your own style and personality. Okay, the very first thing to do when talking to a distressed seller is to give them an overview that you are gonna help them by giving them different options so that they can choose the right solution for their situation. Now, if a seller feels that you're genuine and he can tell, he will open up and be more willing to work with you. Okay, so here is my introduction positioning script that I use. Mr. Seller, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your job due to COVID and you're going through a financial hardship. I'd like to discuss with you some different options in regards to your property and help you find the right solution for you. How does that sound? In order to find the best solution for your situation, I need to know two things. One, how much equity you have in your home, and two, if your preference is to keep the property or if you'd prefer to not keep the property. And I want you to know that it doesn't matter to me. I'm just here to give you your options and offer any help I can, and then you can decide what's best for you. Now, once on board, the first step before spending any time whatsoever is to find out the timeline you're dealing with. Maybe they haven't missed a single payment yet, or maybe they are one day away from foreclosure. You need to find out. However, keep in mind, since COVID is really recent as of this recording, most people are early on in the process, but still, you want to find out. The fastest I ever pulled off a pre-foreclosure deal was three days, but that darn near killed me. I prefer to have at least 30 days to put a deal together. So here's my script to discuss the timeline. Regardless if you decide to keep your property or not, before going any further, let's make sure I'm aware of the time frame to procure a solution. How many payments have you missed? Has the bank sent you a notice of default or a foreclosure auction notice. Once you know the timeline, step two is to find out the seller's equity. Now, knowing their equity is critical to be able to determine which course of action is best for the seller. Now, in case you don't know, equity is the difference between what is owed to the lender and the current as is value of the property. For example, if the borrower owes 180,000 to the bank and the current market value is 200,000, then he has 10% or 20,000 in equity. Now the formula is pretty simple. You take the as is current value of the property minus the payoff amount, that equals the amount of equity. Now for the percentage of equity, take the equity amount and divide that by the as is value. So for example, let's say that the value is 225,000 and the payoff amount, which by the way, doesn't just include the principal balance owed, but also includes any fees, penalties, and unpaid payments. Let's say that that number is 172,000. Following the equity formula, 225,000 minus 172,000 equals 53,000 in equity. And if I divide 53,000 by 225,000, the percentage of equity is 24%. Now I did an entire video dedicated to understanding equity and how it applies to you as a wholesaler and a flipper. So for a more in-depth breakdown, be sure to watch that video. I'll put the link in the description for you to watch later. 
Now here is my script to find out about equity and I'm gonna use made up numbers for illustration purposes. Next, let's discuss your equity. This is the difference between the as is market value that your home will sell for and what you owe to your lender. Now after looking over similar homes that sold recently, I'm estimating that the as is value is 150,000. Do you know how much you owe on your loan? 100,000 is the answer. We'll need to follow up later to get the exact amount. This is actually easy. You just need to call your lender and ask for a payoff. They will email you the exact amount, including any missed payments, fees, or penalties. So if the as is value is 150,000 and you owe 100,000, your equity is 50,000 or 33%. Now we'll discuss some different options in a minute. Okay, we'll discuss those different options based on no equity, 10% equity, and 20% or more equity during step four. But for now, let's look at step three, which is to find out if the seller wants to keep the property or doesn't want to keep the property. This makes a big difference on which direction to go with the seller. So here's my script for that. Finally, the last thing to consider before reviewing your options is if your preference is to keep the property or if you would prefer to not keep the property. Now before answering, know that I will give you your options for both, but the solution very much depends on what you wanna do with the property. So initially, what do you want to do? Keep it or not keep it? The final step is to give the seller the different options based on the info you've gathered during steps one through three. I simply say, Based on your current equity in the property and your desire to keep or not keep the property, let me review with you some different options and solutions and then you'll be able to decide what's best for you. Now let's give the seller his options if he does not want to keep the property based on his equity position. First, let's assume that he has 10% or more equity. Now if a seller has at least 10% equity, he could choose to sell his house and walk away with some cash. Now if this is an option for a seller, I help them understand the difference between selling retail and selling to a cash buyer investor. Here's my script. Since you have enough equity, you could hire a real estate agent and sell it on the open market. Now this usually takes longer, would require showings and possibly fixing some things and after paying commissions, it will cost you about 6%, but it will get you the highest price. Now I have the best agent who can help you. The other option is to sell it quickly as is for cash to an investor like me. With this option, you don't wait, you don't have to fix anything, and you don't pay commissions. In fact, I'll pay all of the closing fees. My cash offer is, then give your cash offer. So what happens if a seller has no equity or even negative equity, which is when a property is underwater or upside down? Now, an example of being underwater would be a seller owes 180,000 to the bank, but the current as is value of the property is 162,000. So they owe more than it's worth. And in this example, they have a negative 10% equity or they're upside down $18,000. So if that were the case, they can't sell the property unless they're willing to write a check for $18,000 at closing, which isn't likely. Now in this situation, a distressed property owner usually does one of three things. One is he does nothing. I call this the ostrich effect. It's when the seller sticks his head in the sand like an ostrich and ignores the situation. Now this is human nature and actually very common. The seller stops making his payment, ignores calls and letters, and thinks somehow it will all work out. But it doesn't all work out, usually resulting in foreclosure, or at the 11th hour, the seller pulls his head out of the sand and realizes he's about to lose his property, and then he calls you one week before the property goes to auction. The second thing a seller may decide to do when his property is upside down is be proactive and initiate a short sale. Now this is where he gets the bank to agree to sell the property and take a discount on what's owed. The third thing a seller may choose to do when he's upside down on his loan is if the existing loan payments are low enough, an investor could take over the loan and then rent or flip the property later. Now this is called subject to and is a creative financing strategy and it allows the seller a way out of the property he otherwise wouldn't be able to sell. Now a quick example showing how an investor could make money doing a subject to deal with no equity or negative equity would be let's say that a seller owes 100,000 to the bank and it's worth 100,000, so zero equity. Now normally this would be a dead deal, but what if the seller had a good rate and his current payment to the bank, including you know, taxes and insurance was $800? And let's say that you could find a lease option buyer who would give you 5,000 down now and then pay you $1,200 a month to rent the property with a buyout price of 120,000 due in three years. 
So in that situation, you would put $5,000 in your pocket up front, you'd cash flow $400 a month, and you'd make $20,000 when the tenant buyer purchases the house later. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this strategy, I did a video where I break it down in detail, link in the description. But let's take a look at my script for when a seller doesn't want to keep the property and has no equity. Since you don't have enough equity in the home to sell it and pay off the loan, there are two possible solutions. Solution number one is called subject to, which means an investor like me would take over your existing loan and handle all of the responsibilities of the property. You get to walk away and never have to worry about it again. Solution two is you negotiate a short sale with the lender where they will agree to sell the property at a discount. Now this is a lot of work and a long and tedious process with no guarantees, whereas subject two accomplishes the same thing, but is much easier and faster. By the way, subject two also works if the seller has equity, so be sure to give that as an option in addition to selling the property. Okay, now let's look at different options if the seller doesn't want to sell and wants to keep the property. If the seller has at least 20% equity, he can always try to refinance and borrow against some of that equity. By doing so, he could get a lower interest rate on his loan, which may lower his monthly payment. He could also try to pull out some cash for working capital to get through his hardship, or maybe he consolidates some debts to lower expenses. The point is, refinancing allows the seller to stay in the property by borrowing against the equity in order to alleviate the financial burden. But to be honest, right now during COVID, Lenders have been inundated with refinance applications and they have increased loan requirements. So this option is probably harder than it looks, but it is an option. So here's the script I use for this option. Since you have at least 20% in equity, another option depending on your credit, income, and situation is you may be able to get a lower rate, pull out equity, or consolidate debts, all of which may provide financial relief right now for you. Now I work with an amazing lender who can help you, but to be honest, Refinances are more difficult right now with COVID, so make sure you are aware of the increased loan requirements. Finally, if the seller wants to keep the property and has less than 20% equity, he doesn't have enough equity to refinance, so that leaves him only one solution if he can't make his mortgage payments, and that's a brand new option available to sellers in financial distress, and that is the COVID mortgage forbearance, which is part of the CARES Act and gives temporary relief from paying their mortgage payments. And this actually applies to anyone facing a hardship from COVID, so it's an option for anyone in financial distress that wants to keep their property. But like I said, for low equity sellers, it's really the only option right now to keep their property. The thing is, most people considering this option don't know enough about it, they don't know how it works, or the ramifications of choosing forbearance. As an investor, Understanding how this forbearance works is important when discussing different solutions to help homeowners. And like I mentioned earlier, I put together a cheat sheet with all of the info you need about the new mortgage forbearance. Let's review that now. Okay, so let me go over some bullets here of the least you need to know. First, lenders cannot foreclose or initiate foreclosure until 60 days after March 18, 2020. Next, forbearance only applies to federally owned or federally backed loans. This is HUD, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, FHA, VA, or USDA. Now, a person must call and request forbearance from the loan servicer. It's not an automatic thing. And next, you don't have to prove hardship. You only need to explain that you have a, quote, pandemic-related financial hardship. Next, you can receive forbearance for 180 days, and then you can request an extension for another 180 days for a total of one year. Next, payments are not forgiven or erased they must be paid back later. Options include paying all of your missed payments at one time, spread out over a period of months, or added as additional payments or a lump sum at the end of the mortgage. All right, now there are four steps to receive mortgage forbearance. Step number one is find out who services your loan, and you can look at your mortgage statement for contact info and then call. Step number two, find out if your loan is federally owned or federally backed. Step number three, call your loan servicer and request COVID mortgage forbearance. Questions to ask include what options are available to help temporarily reduce or suspend my payments? Uh, are there any forbearance, loan modification, or other options applicable to my situation? Or can you waive late fees on my mortgage account? And step four is to ask the servicer to provide written documentation that confirms the details of the forbearance agreement and terms. 
And there are five tips after receiving a forbearance agreement. Tip number one is keep written documentation on hand in case you see errors later. Tip number two, pay attention to your monthly mortgage statement and monitor for errors. Tip number three, stop or change auto payments for your mortgage. Tip number four, keep an eye on your credit, monitor for errors. And tip number five, if income is restored before the end of forbearance, contact your servicer and resume your payments. And I don't know if you knew this, but there is protection for renters as well. The CARES Act provides for a suspension on evictions if a landlord has a federally backed mortgage or a multifamily mortgage. The landlord cannot evict tenants for non-payment of rent for 120 days beginning March 27, 2020. After the 120 day period is up, the landlord cannot require the tenant to vacate until after providing a 30 day notice to vacate. And if the property isn't covered by the CARES Act, you still may qualify for additional relief. Many states have suspended evictions and foreclosures due to the COVID pandemic. So be sure to check and find out with your state. Now, like I said, this is a great resource for you, but also to provide as a value add to distressed sellers considering this option. Again, to get this for free, leave a comment and I'll share the download link with you. So let's take a look at my script for discussing forbearance with sellers. Since you wanna keep the property but you don't have any equity to refinance, the only real solution is to see if you qualify for the COVID mortgage forbearance. Now, if you qualify, you may be able to defer payments for up to one year until you can get back on your feet financially. Now, I have a cheat sheet that goes over all of the steps and requirements. Let's take a look and see if you qualify. Now keep in mind, your goal with sellers is to play the long game. If the seller decides to do forbearance, stay in close contact, follow up regularly. If his financial situation doesn't improve, he may eventually wanna sell and you wanna be the one he calls when that day comes. And to really help you take action and apply what you learned on this video, I'm gonna give you my four step mind map as well as my word for word scripts for free. I'll put a download link in the description box below for you. All I ask in return is you leave a comment and you know the drill. Say, Jerry, thank you for the free resources. You are a flipping genius. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is your number one resource for all things wholesaling and flipping, especially during and post coronavirus. And I'll see you on the next video.